There are about a hundred different things that I have to tell you about Samsung SmartThings and their platform. All the latest updates, product integrations, and a couple of demonstrations to give you with the platform. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to save you time in your life by bringing you all the latest features and updates with Samsung SmartThings and their platform all in one compact video. Now, let's start with a ton of product integrations, but then I'm also going to tell you about some of the latest updates to this platform and the very last one in this video is one of the most important ones for your smart home and for making it extremely reliable. The first update is Globe. Now, this is the Tuya or the Smart Life platform starting its entry point into Samsung SmartThings or restarting it because it was gone for a long time after it had its first integration. There were some real gaps there and now it's back. Now, the interesting thing about the whole uh, platform here around Smart Life is you don't actually have to use the Smart Life application in many cases. So I've brought products in my tech and bulbs and my tech and smart power bar. I brought those into the Globe application to see if they would integrate with Smart Things. The sad news is no. This is a pretty big concern for those of you using Samsung Smart Things with Amazon's Voice Assistant. Now, what's happened is the existing skill in Amazon Skill Library is now called Samsung Smart Things Classic, and you will find a new Smart Things skill available. My advice to you right now is to not change if everything is working and really just to leave this for as long as you can because the new skill actually does not allow currently the ability to manage which devices are imported into Amazon's voice assistant and this will likely lead to a lot of duplicates. Stay tuned here, we will give you more as this situation develops. Wise has started their integration process with SmartThings and they say they have some really interesting things that they would like to do with this integration. I would expect a lot of their devices to come in and work very well with this platform. Now, the development path there is not going to be short. They've even said that and I think we are six months to a year before we see anything tangible from either company. If you've been with us for a while, then you would have seen the review of Smart Dry. Now, this is a dryer sensor you put it in your dryer and it's a great little product it works through amazon's voice assistant to actually give me audible notifications that my dryer or my laundry is done in the dryer or it's really dry whatever i really want to set it at so great little device but it has started its beta into integration with smart things now i'm sorry guys you can't have this i'm not really supposed to be telling you about this so sorry smart drive but you know what, I feel like it's okay to tell you because I'm not telling you you can go and apply for this program, but it is coming and it has been useful already. It's a little rough around the edges, so they've got some bugs to work out yet. The SwitchBot humidifier is a really interesting device that not a lot of people own, I think, at this point. And I'm telling you about it because the whole SwitchBot platform has integration into Samsung SmartThings, and it's one of those connected services. I'm going to talk about that service in a little bit here but the SwitchBot humidifier paired with their SwitchBot meter and of course the hub and the application you bring that all into Samsung SmartThings and it's been very powerful for managing the humidity in a specific room so I put it in my kids room and this has become a really powerful setup with all of Samsung SmartThings and their capabilities there. Now I'm about to get into a massive list of different companies different integrations that have occurred here and Lots of this comes from SmartThingsBeat, who does a great job on Twitter. So if you're going to follow any accounts on Twitter, well, you come and you follow Automate Your Life, but then you should also follow SmartThingsBeat because he breaks a lot of this news, and I love just pulling his feed up and breaking it down for you guys. So here we go with a ton of integrations. SmartThingsBeat showed us Inavelli and the Red series of switches got integration and were added to SmartThings. Cassie IoT is based in India, has managed to get integration into SmartThings. Garage and gate openers from iSmartGate are now live and another garage door controller from a company called Twine. Wi-Fi Singapore's Beam IR Blaster now works with SmartThings. They have a lot of different IR products that they they can integrate with. 
Sal and their Pixie Plus lineup from Australia, as well as WAC Lighting from California, Korean Shade Company, Easy Roll, Air X Vents from the UK, and Sylvan Smart Homes out of India as well. All of those companies got integration for many of their products. And I think it's crazy to see what we are getting for integration from all these little companies coming into the SmartThings platform. It's just growing our options in terms of different types of devices, as well as just different manufacturers to buy similar devices from. Now, something that I was tuned into by uh, Matt Vey, who follows the channel and has actually shown me a Galaxy Home Mini unboxing and setup that he completed I'll leave those links down below and a link to his Twitter profile but he showed me the Samsung smart things vision and this was available actually through a retailer on eBay I'll leave that link down below as well so you will see that device coming to the channel and I think it's a really powerful sensor with a lot of different opportunities for us now I talked about that switchbot humidifier and those connected services and I want to tell you about connected services in a little bit of a deeper way I like giving the odd demonstration of existing capabilities within these videos and sometimes when these things just keep coming up I feel like I need to show you to save you that time again so today I'm going to talk about the connected services and our duplicate devices video about Google Home and you know that whole platform that's really what connected services is all about so what you will see inside of the application when you go into the menu and then you go into connected services this is where you can see all the different connections so in my list now you see Google Amazon and if this then that and within those you can manage quite a bit and that's what I'm going to show you here in a second but the other connected services you can see globe you can see switchbot tp link is in there those are connected cloud services that bring in a number of devices all at the same time but you can manage directly within google and if this and that and amazon which devices are being shared with that platform so what i want you to think about here is what devices you want to share and every time you add a device what you need to do is come back to this menu and choose which devices you are going to share keep that in mind every time you add something to Samsung smart thing the apps and the hub were recently updated and we've got to go through some features there now the award for the coolest feature that so few people can use or the fewest people in the world can use goes to tap to smart view now you have to have a 2019 or 2020 TV and a Samsung smart thing or a Samsung phone as well as the Samsung smart things uh, application installed on that phone now what you can do is you can tap on the side or the top of your TV with your smartphone and this will actually mirror your screen onto that TV now again there's only specific models in 2019 and 2020 that you can use in terms of TVs this has been a change that has been building for a little while they made little adjustments to the new Samsung smart things interface or application there what you will see is a lot more color basically is what this comes down to devices that are inactive will be transparent at this point and devices that are active will show color and and different icons so active is very different than on so keep that in mind with things like sensors and and devices like that they can be showing a status and and therefore be active there's a virtual home tour that will give you a bit of a demonstration of what your smart home would look like within the application that's in the how to use section of the app and then you also have i think this is a really useful thing automations are now showing icons for what's being used in the automation so that's a great visual for you as you scroll through your automations to see what's being used in each automation even if you forget now this next one I think is one of the most important updates in a long time to the platform and what it results in is a lot of diagnostics and understanding for you as someone who owns a Samsung smart things uh, a hub or the platform in general and a lot of devices especially if you have the Zigbee or Z-Wave devices and even more especially if you have Zigbee devices like I do throughout my smart home in order to access this information right now you have to go to the uh, graph.api.smartthings.com website this is the IDE as they call it and 
this interface it has a little bit of a bug go to my locations first and then scroll down and you'll be able to find my hub if you just go to my hubs directly or my devices directly you won't see anything this is happening to a lot of people so go into my locations and then find your hub down below and then you can start to go through my devices and all the different screens so and you start to go into your zigbee devices and your z-wave devices you can actually see the routing that they are taking through your system and that's really important there's also more here but the routing tells you if a sensor is having to go through some other devices to get back to your smart things hub and this tells you a lot in terms of your overall device reliability now there's other diagnostic information here so all of this is very important now number one there is something called LQI and the closer that number is to 255 if it is 255 then what you what that represents is zero errors in the last message so this is like a checksum they're basically checking to make sure that they got all the information they were expecting out of your device and as you get closer to zero you've had more and more errors so when you see other numbers than 255 on a device then it's not communicating its full message properly to the platform. RSSI is a measurement of the signal strength actually and the closer you get to zero because these are negative numbers the better it gets. This is a measurement in dBm of the signal strength that is being measured from this device or being measured to this device whichever way you want to talk about it. Now the so so like I said if you have a a, a larger negative number oh my gosh I got to get this right if you see minus 75 up to minus 100 you got problems with that device anything kind of 40 to ne negative 40 to negative 70 I'd say you're in a pretty good range for signal strength those are really good kind of baselines for you to take with this kind of wireless transmission and if you're seeing anything else or too much routing then you can start to make adjustments reset devices you can do a lot with this diagnostic information so this will really help you get your platform more and more reliable if you're finding problems now with everything going on in the world I think we're going to see some delays for that Galaxy Home Mini here in North America at least for a full release and you know what there's been delays of a lot of things but we also have a number of smart home product leaks that we talked about a few weeks ago here on the channel and I think you'd be really interested in seeing some of the devices that are coming in 2020 so go check that out otherwise guys Thanks for watching, and of course, don't hate, automate.